Welcome back to Flick Favorites. I'm going to explain an adventure, mystery, thriller film from 2010, titled Frozen. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy the content. At the ski resort of Mount Holliston in New England, the film opens. Dan Walker, Joe Lynch, and Parker O'Neill, Dan's girlfriend, go skiing in the mountains. Dan and Joe have been close friends since they were young, and they have a yearly ski vacation tradition. Joe regularly flirts with the ski lift attendant to acquire the cheapest tickets, but this time a man stands in for her. Parker approaches the guy to beg for a smoke but is compelled to flirt with the operator. Joe is dissatisfied that Dan is taking his girlfriend on a men-only outing, in the meanwhile. Parker does not appear to like him at all. She can't even ski, so Joe believes she won't have as much fun. Dan apologizes and explains that he believed it would be beneficial to bring her along so they could get to know one another. The lads are pleased when she eventually succeeds in persuading the lift operator to give them a discounted ride up. When they eventually board the elevator, their journey really starts. Parker and Dan have only recently started dating, and she is upset because he does not compliment her. She responds angrily to Joe's criticism of her for smoking excessively during the journey. Dan attempts to defuse the tension by standing in between the two. The lads advise her to enjoy this weekend and that they are only here to remove her tension when she starts talking about her worries. The passengers complain when the elevator suddenly stops functioning. Although Parker appears composed, she is scared of heights. Dan attempts to comfort her as Joe taunts her about it. They finally reach the top as the elevator eventually begins to function once more. Parker is then made to put on the case by the lads despite her embarrassment because only kids use it. When Dan attempts to assist a girl who has fallen, her boyfriend pulls him away from the woman. Dan merely wanted to assist her, the girl reprimands him, stating. After things settle down, Dan begins to get to know the girl. The group then goes skiing and had a good time. Parker's sluggishness, however, inhibits Dan and Joe from having fun since she trips and falls every few minutes, which irritates Joe even more. They halt at a cabin on their way back from the mountain at night. Over pizza, the lads talk about their catastrophic hike. Joe recommends they ski as they used to by taking the last elevator to the summit of the mountain. After overhearing their conversation, Parker apologizes for upsetting their travel schedule. Dan extends an invitation for her to rejoin them out of sympathy. He persists even though she wants to stay at the hotel and says she doesn't like skiing anyhow. The three gather their belongings and proceed to the ski lift. In the meanwhile, Joe runs into the girl he saved again, and they decide to go skiing the following week. Just as they arrive, the operator stops the elevators. He is the same person with whom Parker made advances to obtain tickets. The group begs him to let them leave again, but he grins and claims they didn't pay the entire amount the first time. In addition, the storm-related closure of the ski lift prevents it from starting up again. The operator insists they stay, then concedes in exchange for an additional $100. As they ascend the lift, the group beamingly observes the skiers below. While waiting, a co-worker approaches the lift operator and gives him the schedule for the following week. The operator replies that his brother's wedding will prevent him from working the following week. He tells him before he leaves that there are still three people in the elevator and that he shouldn't turn it off till they come back. The man observes three individuals ascending the mountain after the manager has left. Without understanding that Dan Joe and Parker were still inside the elevator, he concludes that these are the individuals the elevator operator had indicated. The gang first views the elevator stopping as a minor annoyance. Joe screams angrily, but no one is there, they've all already departed the lift station. In addition, despite wearing thick clothing, the temperature is dropping rapidly, causing them to shiver. In order to maintain attention while they are unaware of what lies ahead, they talk about the worst possible ways they may pass away. They remain for a little while before running away in terror as the lights go out. 
They now understand that the elevator was intentionally halted, rather than stopping due to a problem. In the hopes that someone would hear them, they begin to shout. Dan thinks the elevator halted due of a power failure and that they would be rescued soon while Parker panics and claims no one knows they are here. The pair fights as they panic. Dan thinks of leaping off, even though they are at a very high height, while she sobs in despair. She instantly recalls that it is Sunday and that the ski area won't be open until the following Friday. They will be stranded for more than a week if no one goes looking for them. Although the pals reassure one another that everything will be well, their faces betray worry. Later, Joe needs to go, but because he has no other option, he raises the metal bar and uses the elevator to relieve himself. Then, all of a sudden, it starts to snow. Their issues are made worse when the storm the operator predicted occurs. Later, when a snowplow draws near, the group shouts to attract the driver's attention. The car eventually comes to a stop close underneath the group. Being saved gives them relief. But it turned out that the man had merely stopped due of the weather and hadn't heard or seen them. He speaks with his commander, who gives him the go-ahead to turn around right away. The group shouts at the man to halt as he begins to back up as a consequence. Unfortunately, the storm prevents him from hearing them. The lads throw the stranger their ski gear. They keep yelling and throwing things but the man does not hear or see them and is going back because of the storm. They all start crying because this was their chance of being rescued. Joe attempts to distract himself by talking about trivial things while the temperature lowers further. Dan attempts to soothe Parker out of her terror as Joe keeps on talking. Parker is still shaking. Parker quickly follows by removing her gloves so she may smoke, but they unintentionally fall off the elevator. Dan understands that if they do not find a solution soon away, they will freeze to death. So, the group's only escape is for one of them to leap. Dan volunteers to jump and thinks it will be safe because of the snow on the ground. Joe attempts to talk him out of it by suggesting that they wait until the morning, but Johnny is insistent. Despite Parker and Joe's best efforts, he throws his snowboard on the ground and exits the elevator. Dan unfortunately fractures both of his legs as soon as he hits the ground after falling. He just hears murmuring for a little period of time before the other two question whether he is okay. When he finds that both knees have bones sticking out, he is horrified. He is currently caught in the snow and unable to descend the mountain to find assistance. In a fit of fear, he cries that both of his legs are bleeding. Parker attempts to stop the bleeding by throwing the scarf at him, but it lands on top of a tree. Joe then rolls a scarf into a ball and throws it to his friend. The bone is nearby, but it protrudes noticeably more when Dan reaches out to touch it. He urges Joe to climb up on the suspension rope and reach the closest support tower after wrapping the scarf around his legs. Using the ladders in each tower, Joe may descend. He hesitates and claims he can't pull even one, but in the end he agrees to do it for his closest buddy. When they hear close rumbling, the two are almost ready to depart. Dan's blood has attracted the attention of a pack of wolves, who are moving closer. Dan screams in fear for aid, which draws the wolves closer. Joe ascends the elevator to the top, but the icicles lead him to tumble. Dan is suddenly confronted by a wolf, who growls at him. He doesn't move because he is terrified to. When Parker flings her snowboard at the animal, it runs away. But he soon discovers a pack of wolves around him. As the beasts round him, he fears he has little hope of survival and begs Joe to stop Parker from looking down. Dan is being devoured by the animals while Joe cries into Parker's face. All is silent after a time. Wolves howling in the distance is the only sound that can be heard. Parker claims Joe coerced Dan from jumping sooner. In his defense, he claims that he advised him not to. As they bicker, they start blaming one another for Dan's demise. They eventually embrace and cry. The two nod out, as the night goes by. In the morning, 
Parker awakens with her palm still around the metal bar she had been gripping throughout the night. They attempt to take it off, but the hand, like the bar, is frozen. Nevertheless, they painfully relax their hold. The two cannot use the elevator for another day since they have serious frostbite. Parker advises them to wait a few hours and see if anyone comes searching for them. He eventually nods off, and she sobs while peeing herself. When Parker stopped crying, Joe wakes up and realizes they are still in the ski elevator. The two have a conversation about many elements of their life as she awakens. She is informed about their primary school meeting by him. He believes that Dan's death shouldn't be forgotten because he died attempting to assist them. Then, in an effort to reach a support tower, he scales the seat. The icicles have melted this time, making it simpler to proceed. However, as he sits down, a dangerously loose screw in the bolt securing the chair to the wire causes the chair to sway. He succeeds in getting to the other chair, but the cable has cut his palms. A lone wolf is waiting for them on the ground, but he climbs the support tower because he won't give up. On assist him in battling the wolf, Parker throws her ski pole on the ground. After making it to the bottom, the beast attacks him, but he manages to grab the stick and escape. A wolf pack is following him as he hastily dons his snowboard and begins snowboarding down the mountain. As he vanishes into the mountain, Parker corrects him. As she waits for Joe to come back with assistance, she is now left outside in the cold. He disappears for several hours. Although she is aware that the wolves have located him, she holds out hope that he will be protected. He doesn't show up the following morning despite her waiting. The bolt then accelerates as she turns around in the seat. Eventually, the seat descends to the ground and touches directly on her legs, shattering them. She collects her thoughts before slipping in the snow. She finally finds the horrifying scene of Joe's corpses. She notices a wolf in front of her before she has a chance to respond. The beast does not attack because it is full from eating Joe. Parker succeeds in making it to the side of the road, where she lies down to await assistance. She is eventually picked up by a vehicle and driven off. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Your support would be appreciated. I hope to see you next time.